Welcome once again to our Viper section. These are sample questions from October 2022. And today we are focusing on obstetrics and gynecology. If you are new here, kindly like, subscribe, and share. And if you're already a member, please do well to uh, turn on the post notification bell so that you'll be updated or you get notification anytime we post a new video. So let's begin. So the first question, or I mean, one of the questions, how to calculate EDD, expected delivery date, the expected delivery date. Guys, I will put more of these answers, all right, in the description. So I mean, on the website, medentweb.com. So if you want all of those things, please do well to follow the link, all right? But let's get interactive on the comment section. Let's try to see how best we can calculate this EDD, the expected delivery date. Define labor and its stages. You know, sometimes you read some books, they'll tell you there are three stages. But in Ghana, there are four stages of labor. Four stages of labor. So you have to know all these stages and what each and every one entails. All right. Then for each and every one, Let's mention its complication. Its complication. Very important. Now they now narrow it to obstructed labor. It's one of the complications of labor. Obstructed labor or delayed labor. What could be the cause of a delayed labor? Sorry, obstructed, yeah, obstructed or a delayed labor. All of these things, you have to know them. Before I continue, I will put a link to my Telegram page in the description so please do want to also follow up so that we can continue our discussion from that place as well all right now differentiate between placenta abruptus and placenta previa very important so the areas that you have to focus on one of them will be pain one comes with pain the other doesn't come with pain all right so tenderness and then non-tender then the lie very very important the lie is also a very, very important area that you have to be looking at. There are a lot of factors you have to look at, but we shall go through them in other videos. All right. If you want that, let me know. Then lower abdominal pain. Differential diagnosis. Very, 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 very important. People come with lower abdominal pain. My boss will always tell you that any lady that comes to us, so far as you are in a reproductive uh, age or stage, Always do pregnancy tests for the person. They will tell you that mm, I've not had sex before. Please just do it because people lie a lot. Do it and be sure it's negative. Do it and be sure it's negative. So lower abdominal pain, very, very important. So someone can come with a topic pregnancy and stuff like that. Yeah, you might have missed it. Okay, so please, your differentials, PID and all of those things. You have to do that. I mean, they are all part of the differentials. Now, types of abortion and which one presents with pain we have silent abortion right or missed abortion you might not even know that you have had abortion all you know is that it's baby is gone uh -huh. so the different types and then which one presents with pains like i said ectopic pregnancy one of the lower abdominal pains you can experience now don't forget that all these sub questions that came were based on what the individual answered so for example when the other person of low abdominal pains differential the person mentioned abortion so they will continue with it so i always tell people if you are not sure don't mention it or if you can't talk about it don't mention it because they'll ask you okay a topic pregnancy tell us the clinical features and even its management very very important so all of these things you must know them if you are mentioning it now, an 18-year-old girl is bleeding. What are your differentials? What are your differentials? 18-year-old bleeding. So the question is, the question is not really, uh, it didn't tell us whether the person is pregnant or not. If the person is pregnant, definitely you can say an abortion or a miscarriage. It could be one of the differentials. But of course, you have to add it to it. The question is open, very, very open. So please, do all to note that. 
All right. Now, postmenopausal bleeding. What are your differentials? After menopause, somebody comes to you with bleeding. What are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? Very, very, very important. There is always um, there's a mnemonic. There's a mnemonic. How oh, can I remember it? Oh, I've got a mnemonic. There's a mnemonic for abnormal uterine bleeding. Okay, something, something coin. I've forgotten that 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 the the full thing. And to tell you everything about your differentials, to tell you everything about your differentials, you let's continue. And I remember it. I will. Uh, bring it up again so that you know what to look out for. All right. So, what is fibroid? So, fibroid can be a differential over there. Well, it can cause you to bleed, right? So, it can be a differential. So, what is fibroid? Clinical features, the management principles. Management principles. So, so good. So the differential is called the, or the mnemonic is called palm coin. Palm coin. Palm coin. That the differentials for the abnormal uterine bleeding. Palm coin. So the P stands for something, the E stands for something, L. And so in our next video or in other videos, we will talk about it. But of course, if you want more of these things, please do well to check on medentweb.com. I'll bring you all of these things. All right. The link will be in the description. The indications for myomectomy, myomectomy, indications, indications. So we have a patient even in the ward, okay, who has a fibroid, is pregnant. So at what point do you think it's necessary to do the myomectomy? Or so so, so at what point that indication, right? Or you tell me, patient is pregnant. And it's having my, I mean, it's having a, a fibroid. How should we go about it? Should we go and do surgery and remove it or what? So that's a question for you to answer in the description. So please, in the comment section, sorry. So please, let me hear what you also think. Now, define antenatal care, laboratory investigation, and the booking. So when people come to us who are pregnant, some of the things that we look at for are some of these things. The booking, especially the booking date, the booking HB, the booking BP, and all of those things. It helps us or it informs us of what is happening or what happened and what is happening at the moment. All right. So antenatal care, lab investigations, what are the only things that you have to do? Just we call them the PET labs, right? The PET labs. They must do all of them. All right. So indications for CS, caesarean section. Indications for caesarean section. Very important. So, all right. So one of the indications for caesarean section, they talk about what? Cephalopelvic disproportion. Cephalopelvic disproportion. Again, if you don't know what it is, please don't go and mention it as an indication because they will do a follow-up. They will do a follow-up. Up. So please mention something you can always answer when they go further with it. So they picked cephalop uh, cephalopelvic disproportion and then they went so deep that they went into pathograph. So pathograph is like a graph, like the name implies, but it checks how the contractions are happening, the timings and everything. So this is what actually informs you that something is being delayed Maybe first stage is being delayed or maybe latent phase is being delayed and so on and so forth. Or maybe the cervix is widely open, but the baby is not coming down or there's no descent of the head, right? It's not coming down. So what happens? What do we do? Okay, so that's the pathograph. That's what it tells you. So it gives you the timing, the contractions and everything. So this one, you have to sit down with the... Patient and be taken, 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 taken. Anytime you start crying or making noise, contractions are happening, you have to take or you have to mark it where it is. Uh -huh. so it informs us a lot. And normally, the, the, the midwives do a very good job on all of these things. All right. But we are supposed to be doing all of them. So you have to know about it. You have to know about it when you're doing your rotation. And even now, so learn about it. 
before your exams. So how will you know there is a fetal distress? Very important. How will you know? What is the range of the fetal heart beat or fetal heart rate? What is the range? So normally we give, we tell patient that it shouldn't be more than 160, right? And it shouldn't be less than 110, right? Or 120, something in the 20. But it should be more than 100. It should be less than 110. Okay. But now that is what we know, right? But in that trust, it should be more than 180. But if we tell a nurse, okay, that it shouldn't be, one, one, it shouldn't be more than 180, they will wait till it gets 180 before they refer the patient. And that is what we don't want. So if you take 160, just refer, please. They will refer to you so that by the time it gets to you, it will not be at 180. But 160 is actually okay. Yeah. Anyways, let me know what you also think in the description. All right. In the comment section. All right. But basically, how will you know this fetal distress? We'll have to read extensively on it. Is management. How will you manage a fetal distress? Then how will you manage PID? So it's one of the causes of the uh, lower abdominal pains. So how will you manage it? How will you manage it? PID, pelvic inflammatory disease. What are the most common causative organisms that can cause PID? All right. And let me ask a question. Can somebody who has not had sex before have PID? Okay, so let me know in the comment section. Good. Now let's talk about the peanut stethoscope. Now we've talked about fetal distress. The question is, now let's talk about the peanut stethoscope. What is it? And what is it uses? Uh -huh. So if you have just mentioned to you about the uh, fetal distress, you know that it's one way, one way or the other connected, right? So you have to know it. Then fetal heart sounds. Fetal heart sounds. Fetal heart sounds. So talk about it. Talk about it. So talk everything, everything about fetal heart sounds. Very, very important topic. It's so broad. All right. And again, fetal distress. You will talk about fetal distress. Then talk about the pelvic anatomy. The pelvic anatomy. The pelvic anatomy. Then to talk about PPH. Very high your topic. PPH, PPH, that's postpartum hemorrhage, postpartum hemorrhage, postpartum hemorrhage. All right. Then what is gynecology? What is gynecology? What is gynecology? What is gynecology? All right. Then list gynecological cancers. Gynecological cancers. So I can ask you mention some gynecological diseases. Some of you will be mentioning some obstetric diseases. Please, the difference between gynecology and obstetric. That's why it is called obstetrics and gynecology. So know what gynecology is all about and know what obstetric is all about. So that you can be able to differentiate between them and also mention the diseases or the problems relating to gynecology and the problems relating to obstetrics. Very, very important. So over here, let's able to list gynecological cancers. And based on what the person mentioned, they took the person to endometrial and cervical cancer. So talk about everything. Everything you know about endometrial and cervical cancer. And again, if you ain't sure, don't mention. Because if you mention, they'll do a follow-up. And most of them mentioned endometrial cancer cervical cancer and that is why we are here so in your case it might not be this it might be a different thing but it should be a gynecological problem or cancer all right then how will you monitor uterine contractions how will you monitor uterine con i think i've spoken partly about it in our previous question right all right now define fetal lie and in the fetal presentation mm. Fetal lie. Fetal, sometimes we 
it now makes the two up. But over here, they want to know if you will actually know the difference between the fetal lie and the fetal presentation. Very important. Then the Costco speculum identify and give its uses. So I want to believe that maybe it was just lying down there and they happened to identify it. Okay, maybe you might know what it is, but you don't know the name, right? So, and give the uses of the speculum. So, always is speculum, speculum. Now, the thing is to identify and then give its uses. What it means that if you have not been to the, uh, how do you call it, labor before or the maternity block before or social and gynecology unit before, you might find it difficult to answer some of these questions. And that is why they always want to make sure that you have done your clinicals. You have done your clinical. So please don't take your clinicals lightly. Very, very important. Take it serious. Get to know some of these things. And that's all. You will not be found wanting in any way. And this brings us to the end of the section on obstetrics and gynecology viva. If you want more, check on medentweb.com. And then if you want to join our Telegram page, I'll put all of them in the description box. So do well to join and let's get interactive over there. Again, do well to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't. All right, so see you in my next video.